we did get a little bit of a rain yesterday but yesterday uh so i i did end up buying this new handgun oh uh, it's a uh sig uh p229 legion and i know i've been on this thing about uh, not spending money for the next three months but this thing is kind of different right i mean uh so for a long time you know i carried a glock 19 and then i changed over to a 365 because the 365 was smaller than the glock 19 i carried that uh 365 for, and i carried a glock 19 for about uh, two years and then i carried a 365 for about three years and then i carried a little uh 380 dinker pistol a little a uh, little tiny little pistol and i'm like you know what i think that this is not good like you know uh like if I'm gonna carry a handgun, I'm I, I should probably carry something that is is uh is pretty good, right? And so this gun actually um it's got a little bit of a history to it. This gun uh the owner inherited it from his brother. His brother uh the the owner is actually not that old. Oh well, excuse me. I guess I'm the new owner, but uh the man uh you know uh the man that I got this pistol from. And, uh, you know, I do I do have a concealed carry license. Uh, you know, I've had one. But, uh, you know, here in Texas, uh, if you want to carry a gun, you can. Uh, it's, we got constitutional carry. So I still do have my uh, concealed handgun license. I purchased a three, uh, the thing uh, two, three years ago. Or not purchased it, but I got qualified for it. And then I got my concealed carry license about two, three years ago. And so uh, my concealed carry license, it proves that I'm not a felon, right? If, if I was a felon, the government would not give me a concealed carry license. And at the end of the day, you know, when I look at it, people like me, we're not really going to do anything, right? I mean, we're not going to do anything in terms of being a criminal, because why would we, right? I mean, we got some, I got, like, people like me, I mean, you don't really have to, you know, really worry about me doing anything, like being a criminal, right? Because I got so much going on, you know, I do so well for myself. Why would I go and be a criminal, right? I mean, what's the point of that? I mean, I already do so well for myself. And so, you know, uh, I carry a gun. I've carried a gun on me for maybe the last uh, 10 years of my life. And, uh, you know, uh, this gun right here, uh, the, uh, the man who sold me this gun, uh, you know, legally sold me the gun. Uh, his brother was the owner of it. And his brother uh, passed away. Uh, recently and the man is not uh the man's not very old himself and so something must have happened or something the man must have been uh you know 50 in, in his uh, mid 50s and i guess something happened to his brother and his brother passed away but if y'all want to take a look at the grass it looks very good right the grass looks incredible but uh the but if you look at this grass right here if you look at the grass you can tell that the uh the grass is uh sticking straight up into the air and so plants, when they're uh, when they're growing optimally, this is actually a sign that you can look for to see if your plants are growing at somewhat of an optimal at, at an optimal pace. Is that the plants will actually uh, stick uh, vertically up into the air, like they're reaching up for the air. And so you know, that's actually something you can look for as well. And a lot of plants do this, even a broadleaf plants do this, like tomatoes and peppers. If they're doing very very good. If they're growing at somewhat of an optimal pace, they will actually uh, stick themselves straight up in the air. And if you take a look at it, you can tell that the, the grass plants are sticking themselves straight up in the air. And I would say, uh, you know, even over the last two or three days, right, my grass has already visibly grown. And you, you always got to remember that this grass right here is being grazed constantly by about two to three animals an acre. And my grass is still over, over like a foot tall, over a foot tall. Oh, uh, you know, um, close to a foot tall or over. And this this grass is being grazed 24/7 as much as the cattle want to eat two to three animals an acre, average weight maybe 650. And so you got to consider that as well. This, this if this grass was not being grazed, my grass would be like two feet tall. And if I cut that for hay, I mean. I would get a boatload of hay, uh, like a, probably like a five, six rolls an acre. You know, on this 10-acre field, you know, uh, 
It would be a lot of hay, a lot. This grass is being grazed constantly by cattle, two to three animals an acre. But this gun right here, uh, I got it for a 30% uh, a discount. The man, uh, he inherited it from his brother. His brother passed away very recently. And him and his brother were both uh, are both SIG guys. They both, uh, they both just, uh, uh, they're just SIG guys. And I'm a SIG guy too. I, I carried a Glock for a long time and I do not like that Glock. I don't know, I don't know why. The, uh, the Glock is just not for me. Uh, when I shot my 365, you know, uh, I had a uh, Glock 19 for like three years that I carried around. And when I changed over to a 365, I remember uh, that, that first, uh, I mean, I thought the 365 was the greatest gun to have ever been made, legitimately, uh, because, you know, all I knew was the Glock. But when I shot this pistol, I got this handgun. So this handgun right here, it normally sells. And if you take a look at it, there's almost zero wear on it, right? It's like zero, zero wear on it. There's there's almost zero signs of any sort of wear on it. There's, there's zero damage on it or anything. And I got a 40%, 30% discount on it. And so uh, he told me what, and, and the thing is that he told me, uh, uh, well, when he gave me the gun, he gave me all the stuff that it comes with in the factory with it as well. And two of the magazines are still in plastic wrap, the original factory plastic wrap. And so I figured maybe he shot this thing. He, he probably put less than 250 rounds on it. If you look at the barrel right here, uh, if you start seeing wear and tear on the barrel right here, because every time you uh, you fire the weapon the slide will will uh, will push back against this portion of the of the barrel right here and it'll start scraping the barrel and so any gun that's been shot uh, pretty significantly um you know if you shoot a gun you know uh, like a thousand times and stuff like that you'll start seeing this finish right here wear off of the barrel you'll start seeing it wear off of the barrel you can see it slightly happening right here and so that's one of the signs you know uh, and if you take the slide apart and you look at the internals of the slide, if the slide has a lot of scraping on the metal, you can tell that it's been shot a lot. And this one, I took it apart and I took a close look at it. And I'm like, he must have shot this thing less than 200 times, less than 250 times. And two of the uh, two of the original factory magazines are still in the original factory plastic wrap. And I got a, and I got a 35 percent discount on it. This right here, this is normally a uh, 1200, 1400 dollar gun. And I got it for uh, for 850. So I got like a 30% discount on it. And it's got this uh, double action, single action trigger. So it's got the double action, single action trigger. And, uh, you know, you can. it's hard to, to, to really see how tall the grass is. But if you look down at my feet, it'll, it'll make it more obvious. You can see how my boot is almost disappearing into the grass. And if I take all down to the grass, y'all can see how tall it is. This is what I mean by the, uh, the field is about 10 inches tall. Uh, 10 to 12 inches tall. And it's being grazed at all times by about two to three animals an acre you know this 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 fit this grass right here has been grazed you know as much as these animals want to eat i got you know an average weight of about 600 pounds maybe i'll cross these animals and i got about two to three animals an acre and i still have this much grass left over but this is in reality this is what about 500 dollars a month will get you if you if you just if you just learn how to farm if you just learn how to farm very 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 well not even very well, but just to this degree, right? If you just learn how to farm to this level, if you if you put in about five hundred dollars a month into your farm, you probably you know you can make you you can tenfold your money. You can tenfold your money, and uh, you know uh, this is this is proof, right? Like I'm not photoshopping the grass onto my field with some AI tool, right? I'm not photoshopping this grass onto my onto my field as I walk through the uh, as, as I walk through my pasture. I'm not photoshopping cattle onto my field, right? This is all real life. And so, uh, you know, this is what $500 a month will get you. And, you know, you, you can easily tenfold your money as long as you know what you're doing. Easily tenfold your money. I'm not going to say easily because a lot of people, if they actually try, and you can look, look, at, my, look at my animal right there. You, uh, you can see that the grass is almost up to her chest. You see, but this is what I mean by the grass gets better in the back. But you see that animal right there? The grass is all, the grass is up to her chest. And so in the back, the, the grass gets up to like a, probably a closer to two feet tall in the back. And so as I go through my field, 
the grass gets better the further back I go. And this grass is being grazed constantly. 24-7 access by these animals. Average weight, maybe 600 pounds, about two to three animals an acre. And the grass, you know, in the back is close to like a foot and a half, two feet tall. And so, the, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, the grass is, it's gonna grow better here very soon. Granted that, you know, uh, well, okay, but here's the thing, right? It's like all of these plans that I make and all these things that I do, if something starts to go wrong or whatever, if I if I if I if I keep a good eye on everything and I'm like, oh, you know, this winter wheat has developed some kind of a fungal problem, uh, you know, it's uh, it's got I've got too much biomass on my field and the humidity was high, and now my 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 winter wheat has blight on it or whatever it may be, right? Whatever it may be, oh, something's going wrong. I got something going wrong. Well, if anything like that were to happen. You know, I would go back to the drawing books, right? And I would say, okay, if I look at my field right now, I've got about uh, two inches of rain over the last two weeks. I got about one inch of rain a week. And, you know, the, that's the average. You know, I get about, you know, about three to four inches of rain a month in the spring is what I would consider average. And so if I get three to four inches of rain, uh, you know, a, a month, and I've got two inches of rain over the last uh, two weeks, if I plow my grass under, I can then plant a sorghum Sudan grass on top of that, or I can plant a pearl millet. You know, uh, and then I got rain coming in next week and I anticipate that I'll get about one to one and a half inches of rain and the ground is already wet. And so if I plow it right before it starts raining, when it rains, it will recompact my soil and I can then plant a, uh, a different crop on top of that on top of that field. Right. I mean, you know, uh, there's a lot of ways. Once you know how to do something, there are a lot of solutions to the problem. A lot of solutions. You, you can solve it. A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, whichever way you want. And so that's the thing is like, uh, you know, I, you know, what I've said before is that failure is not absolute, right? And failure does not really exist in real life. Failure does not really exist. I mean, if you just, you know, and that's the thing about anything is that if you just keep trying, if you just keep trying legitimately, uh, you know, you have to, you have to understand 100% that granted that if you're born with, you know, and you're not uh, severely mentally handicapped, if you're just born average, right? Somewhere average, 90 to 110 IQ. If you're just born average, if you put in effort, you will get better. Legitimately, like, and he, here's here's kind of a, a good way to look at it, right? Like, if you really want to look at it from a way of, uh, you know, uh, you know, how could you possibly get worse? You see what I'm saying? Like, if you don't know how to do anything at all to begin with, how could you get worse, right? You couldn't get worse. And so if you start putting in effort, you will get better. I mean, that that's just the only way for things to go if you want to look at it that way. And it's kind of harsh, but it's true, right? Like, if you don't know how to do anything at all in terms of, like, if you want to be a farmer or whatever it may be, you don't. it doesn't have to be farming. Like, if you want to be a farmer, if you don't know how to farm at all, how could you get worse, right? So just put in effort. If you put in effort, you will get better. And if you put in more effort, you will get even better. You know, and look at these animals, you know, super well conditioned. I'm going to make a boatload of money. I, I, You know, what I've always said is that if my grass is going up in a vertical line, my bank account is going up in a vertical line because all of this right here costs me very little money, very little money. It's all labor, all labor and skill. And so almost 99% of what I do is straight labor and skill. It's not money. You know, and you know, that that's, a, you know, 500, I always say don't give up on your dreams over $500, right? You know, if you fell out of heaven, if, you, if you're one of those people, oh, I fell out of heaven a seven, right? Well, that's not good either. You know, objectively, you need to be accomplishing things, right? You need to be getting better. Oh, man, if I was put on a field with a million other farmers, I would obliterate 9,999,000 of them. Right, that that's how you need to be. It, it, like, if you genuinely cannot look at yourself and say that, and you do not believe that, then you know you need to get better. You need to get better. And the only way to get better is to put in more effort. And that's what I mean by if you're young, like you know. And but a lot of people, once they're a certain age, they cannot, you know, uh, you know, because let's say somebody is, you know, uh, let's say somebody's like, uh, you know, sixty, right? Let's say somebody's fifty. And they've been living, you know, for 50, 60 years, thinking the way they're thinking and doing what they're doing for the last 50, 60 years, right? The chance of that person turning on a dime 
and legitimately focusing themselves 100, 110 hours a week on farming or whatever else it may be, whatever they want to get good at, focusing themselves 15 hours a day. They, they dream about their farm when they sleep or they dream about what they're trying to do when they sleep. 24 hours a day, live where they work, right? It's almost impossible to, to, to do that with somebody who is, you know, uh, like, you know, uh, who is, all, and it's as young as 25, because most of the time, you know, like if someone is over 20, over 18, even sometimes it's even as young as 15, because some people, they, de they, they develop mentally faster than other people. Some people do develop mentally faster than other people, and if you take a good look at them, you can tell, right? You know, sometimes the, the I fell out of heaven at seven starts very young. Sometimes, you know, you know, you could end up with a 15 year old who, who is legitimately walking around thinking I fell out of heaven at seven. And it does happen very young, but you gotta take a very good look at the person. Because the only way to get better at anything objectively is to put an effort over a very long period of time. Objectively, that is the only way. There is not any shortcut. And I know that that may, you know, uh, but you got to take a very good look at the person. You know, sometimes the, uh, you know, the damage has been done from a very young age. You, you know, at that point, the chance of them actually turning around and, and accomplishing, you know, becoming fantastic or, you know, incredibly good, even if you don't get to this level, right? Even if you do not get to this level, even if you miss the mark by 50%. You will still be doing very good for yourself. Very good for yourself. You know, because this farm right here, I would anticipate that I'm going to make over $10,000 a month on just this farm. Just this farm. This 10-acre field right here is going to make me over $10,000 a month. And so, you know, that that just is what it is, right? Because money is just is what it's just a number, right? It's objective. I always say money's objective. It does not matter what you think. Money's not subjective. Money is objective, right? It does not matter what you think the person, you know, when, if a, one person is making $10,000 a month and another person is making $4,000 a month, one person is making $10,000 a month and one person is making $4,000 a month, it's objective truth. You know, number, the, the, the money is just a number, right? And so, you know, I've always, you know, one of the things that I got going up is I still got to go and talk to my CPA about my taxes. And here's the thing about taxes. And this, and this, uh, when I talk about my taxes or anything else, and if you, y'all can actually barely see my dog, the grass is up to like her back. You can, you know, the grass is like a foot and a half tall in the back across the entire field. And these, this, this grass has been grazed by, you know, this grass is being grazed by like two to three animals an acre, 24 seven nonstop. They can eat as much as they want, and these animals weigh about 600 pounds. And that's how this, this is what I mean by I have unlimited food. I have I have a massive excess of resources, right? My grass is growing in extremely well. And you know, I mean, but you know, everything that I've been doing up until this point, I've legitimately been showing y'all day by day. And so there's legitimately nothing more that I can do in terms of actually helping people unless you want to pay me a drastic sum of money. Because when it comes to money, you know, like I won't think that anybody is serious because me, I already have unlimited money. Like by the time you're making, you know, by the time you're bringing home like 12, 13, 14 thousand dollars a month, you have unlimited money. Granted that you do not have major problems. You know, if, you, if you're if, like me, I probably bring home close to like ten, twelve thousand dollars a month. When all things are considered, after I pay for everything, right? After I pay for everything, I bring home like ten, twelve thousand dollars a month. You know, everything after I pay for everything. That's unlimited money. That's like me bringing home like four hundred dollars a day. It took me two days to buy this pistol, right? It took me two days of work to buy this pistol. Legitimately, that's another way to look at it. I worked for three days and I paid for my mortgage. I mean, but you know, and I know that that may seem unfair, but you know, if you want to live the unfair life, you should go and do this too. You should go and work 15 hours a day for the next 15 years of your life and get to a point where you're so good at something that you can legitimately, objectively say, you know, if you put me on a field with a million other farmers, I could obliterate 9 million of them. 9,999,000 of them. 
You know, you should get to that point in your life too. And if you get to that point in your life, you now have unlimited money as well. You know, you got to think about it that way. You know, nobody's stopping anybody from farming. You know, you know, the $500 a month that it costs me to run my farm is not going to be what makes or breaks me, right? It's not going to be what makes or breaks anybody. And that's the thing about money is like, you know, if someone genuinely wants me to pay me to do something, they're going to have to give me enough money to the point that they feel like vomiting, that they get so scared that they feel like vomiting. Because if they don't give me that much money, then I don't believe that they actually want it. Because here's the reality of my situation, right? You know, if you know what I always say, you know, my business, I, 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 um, I invest 100% of my earnings. I invest 100% of my earnings into my business. And this is also by what I mean by do not start a business if you are just going to, you know, you know, go and fail and lose all your money. Because if you lose all your money and you've invested 100% of your earnings into a business and you fail and now you have to pay interest on your loan, you're screwed forever. Screwed forever. Practically almost everybody's going to be screwed forever. If you do that, if you actually try and do what I do and then you fail, you will be screwed forever. Almost guarantee it. Because I invest 100% of the money that I earn into my farm. 100%. And that's also why I don't have to pay income tax. Because I, I purchase a massive sum of, of, of assets, right? That's also why I don't have to pay income tax. Legally, I don't have to pay income tax. But if somebody tried to do what I did and they, their, their grand idea was that they were going to copy and paste what I did and then they failed... You would see what I go through spiritually. You would understand what I go through. I have to invest 100% of the money that I make into my farm. You know, I look to grow my wealth tax-free. I make unlimited money, right? If you want to see what that feels like, what that feels like spiritually as an individual, you won't know until you try it. And when you, if you do feel like you're going to try, you will be horrified. Chances are you will run away. Chances are you will not do it. Because it is, it is like, it is almost like you want to vomit. Oh my God, I need to invest 100% of the money that I made this year into my farm, right? If I have living expenses of $30,000 a year and I, you know, and the cattle market skyrocketed and, and you know, uh, the animals that I were going to, uh, you know, uh, the, the feeder cattle market skyrocketed and I made 60 grand. Now I have to invest a hundred grand into my farm. And if I don't invest 100 grand, you know, the, the money that I don't invest, I have to, I have to pay taxes on, right? And so, you know, let's say I use 30000 to to live on. I use 30000 to pay for my truck, to pay for my house, to pay for all of my living expenses, to pay for my insurance and my bills. So that leaves me with 70000 cash left over, right? So now I need to go to the bank and take a loan for thirty grand. And now I have the hundred grand that I need to invest into my farm. Well, if you go under, if your business, if you suck and your business sucks... You will lose all your money. And at that point, you've lost more than 100% of your earnings. Because you also need to consider that to, to invest 100% of your earnings, you also need to take a loan for the difference. That is your living expenses. And so, you know, if you invest 150% of your earnings and you fail, you will be freaking wrecked. I almost guarantee it. you will you will be miserable. You will lose, you know, you will live in, in a... In a uh, you will live in a horrible situation for like eternity, for the, for the, your financial forever, right? Legitimately, it, it will take you like 20, 30 years to recover from that for most people. And so when people look at me and they go, oh, this is unfair, that is unfair. Well, I mean, it just is what it is, right? Because if we look at what actually got me here, then you would start to understand you know, oh my God, he out here investing 140% of his earnings. You know, he has to do five jobs by himself. Makes unlimited money. If you, you know, you know, if you looked at the entire situation for itself, and making unlimited money is not is not the is not the end all be all, right? The chances of somebody actually getting to this point very, very, very low. That's why I always say repeatedly that the chance of anyone actually making it here is like zero percent. Very, very, almost like it's going to be like one in maybe like 10, like 10 million. 
because I'm, I'm just going to be honest. It is, you know, a lot of people, you know, either they have character problems or they have some other major problem that stops them from developing properly. And a lot of people, it's either I fell out of heaven a seven, they get complacent. I fell out of heaven a seven or, or the work, the work is just too hard. Most of the time that that is the case. They get complacent. I fell out of heaven a seven or the work is too hard. You know, when they realize that they're going to have to do five, six, seven jobs by themselves and they're going to have to live where they work and work 15 hours a day for the next 15 years of their life and the next 14 and the first 14 years are not going to get paid anything. That is when usually when they decide, oh, maybe I should just go do something else. Usually that is when they decide. And so, you know, and when it comes to like stuff like my income taxes, okay, because here's the thing about my, here's my plan about my income taxes and, and maybe this will be a, of use to other people. When I go to talk to my CPA, my CPA is going to know my numbers. He's going to say, bring me this, uh, bring me this paperwork, bring me that paperwork, bring me this paperwork. I'll bring it to him. And then he will, uh, he'll type in the numbers, boom, 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 he'll type them in, right? And he'll say, okay, you owe income tax on this much money. And if it turns out to be a lot of money, I'll just say, okay, file me for an extension or I'll be right back. I'll leave that office. I'll go and purchase more cattle or if I need to, I have my power play, right? I've always said I have my power play. If I've made way too much money, if I've made way too much money, then I can just go and buy myself an F-350. You know, if, if it turns out that I have way too much money and it's like, oh man, I'm going to have to pay a lot of income tax, I will just go and buy myself an F-350. And then I will go back to the tax office, show him the paperwork saying, I purchased more assets. I purchased more assets for my business and then I will walk out of there not having to pay income tax. But that's how it is, right? And don't don't uh, don't get upset with people like me, right? Don't get people don't get upset with people like me because if you actually understood what I had to go through to to achieve the things that I did, you you would you would vomit and piss yourself. You know, imagine investing 150% of your income. Imagine having to work for 15 years and not getting paid for the first 14 and still having to work 15 hours a day. Imagine not knowing that this was possible, but you still put you still put your balls on the line, right? I mean, that's the reason why people don't make it. Honestly, that is the reason why people don't make it. And it's like, you know, um, and if you and, and if unless you are willing to accept that as well, when you start to uh, when you start to accept that as reality for what it is, it's the truth, right? It's the reality of the situation. Then you will start not being so upset with people like me. You know, unless you understand the entirety of everything going on, don't don't turn into this emotional little temper tantrum baby, right? A lot of people, if they actually tried to do what I do, they, they, they would be horrified. They wouldn't do it. I could give them $500 and they still wouldn't do it. But if you're young, right? This is what I'm saying by if you're young, you still have the opportunity to do it. Granted that everybody's not the same and some people develop faster than others. But if you take a look at somebody and they're, you know, they're still kind of like a blank slate, right? They're still kind of like, they haven't been a... Uh, they haven't developed the I fell out of heaven a seven mentality or anything like that. And they understand. They deep down, they understand that if they have good character and if they work and if they put in effort, that they will get better objectively, that they will get better. Once they start to understand these things, you now have a chance. And the chance of someone, you know, but the moment someone, you know, that they've, they've developed the I fell out of heaven a seven mindset and they've become complacent or they've just become a temper tantrum baby. You know, it's it's very, 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 it's almost impossible to turn them around. The chances of them actually succeeding, you know, and turning themselves around is almost zero. But if you're young and, you know, maybe, you know, and, and if you genuinely want to become a farmer, what I would suggest is buying something like a 10 to 20 acre field. Because if you buy a 10 acre field, you'll pay about $500 a month for it. And the first 10 years of the 10 years of the loan, depending on your interest rate, the first 10 years of your loan, you will be paying about five about five hundred dollars. Well, the, the entirety of the loan, you'll be paying about five hundred to six hundred fifty dollars a month. 
for a 10 acre field for a 20 acre field you'll be paying about a thousand a thousand to twelve hundred something like that and then now you have the opportunity and just understand that this 10 acre field right here i may be you know net profit close to six five six thousand dollars a month remember that remember that number because you now know it's possible i've already shown you that it's possible when i got here i did not know that this was possible so you already know it's possible so if you have a 10 acre field and you farm balls to the wall you become the greatest farmer that you could possibly be you will end up even if you mess up tremendously you should still make four thousand dollars a month you know remember that and you know because me nobody told me that when i started when i started legitimately all i had was you know a uh, you know, well, when I started, you know, but the things, you know, when I was, when I was a younger, when I was a real young guy, right? When I was really, we still had dial up internet. I didn't get an iPhone until I was like 20, like 23 or something like that. And so, you know, and I still made it here. And so, you know, nobody told me, you know, if you, if you bought a 10 acre field, you could pay 10, you could pay $500 a month for it. You know, a uh, thirty percent of your thirty uh, percent of your monthly payment will go into principal on the property, and if it's amortized, you know, over the first ten years, if you go to the FSA or wherever, you know, if you go and you uh, shop around for interest rates, if you get sub six percent interest rate, you know, uh, thirty to fifty percent of your uh, your your monthly payment will be principal, and so you're really only losing about fifty to seventy percent of your monthly payment as interest, and that is also tax deductible more than likely. You can ask your CPA about that. You know, so ultimately you're losing about two hundred fifty dollars a month to own a ten acre field, and if you farm balls to the wall and become a phenomenal farmer, you can make sixty thousand dollars a year for that. Uh, you know, for for that, you know, you could legitimately turn that. Uh, you know, whatever, right? That eight hundred dollars a month into into sixty thousand dollars a year. Nobody told me that, right? Nobody told me that, and I still went for it. And so me, you know, I'm already telling you that it's possible. And I'm showing you that it's possible, right? Legitimately, I'm out here every day telling you what I do on a daily basis. I legitimately cannot give you any more information. You need to, you know, you know, just go after, get after it. And you already know it's possible. And so, you know, I... Uh, that's you know that just that just is what it is right and but this uh you know uh this uh i'm actually gonna start carrying this pistol uh you know i carried you know i've carried a gun for the last you know probably 10 years of my life and i figured you know for uh you know i know that that's kind of uh kind of nuts that uh that this you know i well i got this for a 30 40 percent discount and i was actually gonna see if i can take the cattle up to the front so i could practice shooting some more but i'm just gonna leave them here they seem to be enjoying themselves, so I'm just gonna leave them here, and I'll uh, I'll practice some other day. But uh, you know, I got this for like 30, 40 percent discount, and it's got a single action, double action trigger, and so it doesn't have a manual safety on it. And so if I need to fire it from the holster, I can uh, I can just uh, I can just death grip the gun, and it will go off. And then after that, it will go into single action mode. Or if I need to shoot the gun single action, I can just cock it back myself. But this gun is super accurate. Uh, you know, this gun, I don't know what it is, but this gun is super accurate and it's all steel, 100% steel. So it's heavy. And, uh, you know, the thing, the reason why I bought this gun was because, you know, like I, I kind of, uh, you know, like sometimes things get kind of sketchy, right? Cause you know, people like me, you don't really have to worry about people like me doing, you know, like crime, right? You don't have to worry about people like me being a criminal, because why would I be a criminal, right? I'm legitimately, you know, I do so well for myself. I love what I do. I, you know, I'm legitimately, my plan in life is to farm for 15 hours a day until I'm 150 years old. And then uh, the day that I die, when I'm 150, I'll quit farming, right? That That is legitimately my plan. Why would I give that up to be a criminal? I already make unlimited money, right? And so, you know, you know I carry a gun and uh but this thing is is super super accurate and and it's it's all metal and uh you know i got a 30 40 percent discount on it and so and i'm i figured you know I, this gun right here i really like the double action single action uh the single action it almost feels like a like a four pound ar trigger and it's got a short reset trigger on it and uh you know actually when i was going to go buy this gun 
Uh, I was uh, I was at I was at a gun store. I was at a gun store, and I was looking at 10 millimeters. I was looking at 10 millimeters. I looked at the FN 510 and the Glock 20, and I didn't realize. You know, my whole big idea was, oh yeah, man, I'm gonna carry a double stack 10 millimeter, right? Oh yeah, I'm gonna carry that thing cocked and locked, and it's gonna be awesome. I went there and I looked at a 10 millimeter gun and I was like, yeah, no, this, this ain't it. 10 millimeters are massive, massive guns. And I was like, this ain't it. And so that's why I ultimately ended up getting this one. And I like the double action, single action. And I've shot this thing uh, about, I shot this thing uh, 29 times. I shot this thing 29 times yesterday and the thing is super accurate and you don't feel any recoil, you know, almost zero recoil. Like I had a, a plate set up, an eight inch plate, an eight inch circular gong set up uh 35 yards away i took 35 long paces so when i say long pace like if you see my if you see my boot on the ground right here uh, on the ground right here this is what i call a long pace this, this right here I, I took long paces maybe not that far but maybe about right here like i'm not not to the point where i'm off balance but i took 35 long paces like this you see what i'm saying i took 35 long paces away from the target and uh you know uh, and i shot at it it's an eight inch gong and I managed to hit it uh, 23 times in the 29 times that I shot. I hit it 23 times, and so I missed six times. But here's the thing about this gun is that uh, usually when I miss, I miss low. Usually when I miss, I'll miss low. But I was, I, my bullet was going just like a hair over the target. I could actually see the dust coming up from behind the target where I missed. And so I don't know if it's because of the, uh, maybe the, uh, the, well, the length of the barrel is different. Is, is different. You know, I carry, uh, you know, I've shot a 365 uh, over the last three years. I would say the only handgun that I really fired. But if you take a look at Lucy, you can see how tall the grass is. She's having to stick her head up to, to be able to see. But you can see how tall the grass is, right? But, you know, over the last uh, about uh, five years, the only handgun that I really fired was a P365. And, uh, and so when I got a new handgun and I was firing this, I had to kind of figure it out. But when I was shooting... The, uh, the round was going just a tiny bit high. Like, literally, if I if I had hit a quarter inch lower, I would have hit the target. I would have hit the target on the very top of the target. And so I think that that was just me. Uh, I just did not know how the, uh, the, the gun was going to work. But once I got it figured out, and this is what I mean by the, the recoil is almost zero, and it's a very heavy gun. I, I freaking love this gun. I mean, you know, even if it's heavy, you know, but, you know, that's the thing about me is that, like, when I go on, you know, and I look for advice, I always look for advice from people who are just the best, right? And that's what I always say, you know, if you want to do something, look at people who are very good, right? And, you know, when I, like, go and I look around on, I watch videos on, like, special forces people. I watch videos on special forces people and what they carry on a daily basis and, and all that good stuff, right? And so, uh, all of, most of these guys are carrying full-size pistols. And so I was like, you know, over the last 10 years of my life, I went from carrying a compact, I went from carrying a Glock 19 to carrying a 365 to carrying a little dinker or a 380. And, you know, um, and it's, you know, sometimes things like I remember one time, like this guy was a, I don't know, what, but, uh, you know, this guy, uh, this, this man, you know, from, from, I was told that one of the customers at the store told me that this man and three other guys had jumped their uncle. Had jumped, had jumped their uncle and beat him real bad, and they had jumped their uncle and beat him real bad, and uh, you know, uh, and uh, and now he was in the store, and I don't know exactly what was going on. You got to understand that me, like when I get put in these situations, a lot of the times I'm in a situation where I don't know what's going on, right? And that makes me very nervous. And this guy, you know, uh, you know, this guy and three other guys, uh, three other full-grown men, from my understanding, had jumped this customer's uncle. And this customer was very upset when she saw this person. She got very upset and confronted him about it. And, you know, and confronted him about it in the store. And uh, before, you know, but this guy, he was uh, he was in the store selling stuff. He was in the store selling stuff. And so uh, he was in the store like uh, just uh, just hustling. From my understanding, customers were telling me that, uh, well, he was, he was just, uh, from what I understand, customers were telling me, I don't know the exact entirety of the situation, but he was telling me that the customers were telling me that he's hustling and that he's not really uh he said he was working for the church he was working for a church and he was collecting donations and uh like selling fruits okay that's what he was doing and customers were coming to me and telling me that he's hustling 
and that he not actually working with the church but i just kind of shrugged it off and i said i don't know what's going on but then one time a customer came in and she saw him and she got very upset she said oh my god you, you know you know why are you in here doing this you know uh, you jumped my you and your three whatever goons jumped my uncle right y'all jumped my uncle and you know y'all 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 beat him until his face was like a you know a, like a like a like a bloody mess right and she got super upset about him and so i told the man he had to leave right i told the man he had to leave and that he couldn't be doing whatever he couldn't be collecting donations at the at, at the at the at the store anymore and that if he wanted to you know and if he wanted to you know collect donations he's gonna have to get the people to go to his church to give him donations right and so a, a, a week later this guy shows back up and this guy shows back up and he sees me in the parking lot and he he's visibly upset you know i can tell he's visibly upset you can you can tell you know he's kind of he's kind of hunched up he's got his hands in his pocket he walks up to me legitimately like this close like legitimately he had both of his hands in his pocket and and uh he was sweating bullets i mean you could tell that this guy was super nervous right and you oh man you know i'm a servant of god you can't tell me what to do i'm you know uh you know uh you know, I'm here to, to do to do God's work. You can't tell me what to do. Super upset. Got both of his hands in his pocket, right? And me, from all I know from about this guy is that he's hustling and that him and three other guys jumped a uh, customer's uncle, right? That's all I know about this guy. From from That's all the information that I've been given about this guy. I don't know this guy. That's all the information that I've been given about this guy. And now he's standing like legitimately a foot away from me with both of his hands in his pocket. If he had something in his pocket and he wanted to like hit me in the face with it or whatever, he could immediately, right? And so I'm sitting there very nervous. You know, legitimately, like in my mind, I'm like, what the heck is going on, right? Like, I don't, I don't know what. And, and so I, you know, I gave him one, you know, but... But, you know, I gave him one stern warning, right? I, you know, because I don't know what is going on. He's standing a foot away from me. He's got both of his hands in his pocket. He's saying something about God, right? Oh, my God, you can't tell me what to do. I'm a servant. Of, I'm a servant of God. You know, oh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, God tells me what to do. Whatever, you know, you know I'm, I'm like, I don't know what this guy is on about, right? And, you know, and, you know, and that is why stuff like that is why I carry a gun because I don't know what's going to happen, right? And, and the reality of a situation is that if you shoot somebody, like let's say you want to be a responsible owner, gun owner, and I and I and I and I verbally warned the man, you know, like like you need to like leave me alone right now, or I'm gonna shoot you. Genuinely, I I, I will because here in my mind, here is here is the reality of, of of me being a responsible gun owner is me understanding what is gonna happen, right? If you shoot somebody with a pistol, nine millimeter or lower caliber the chance of them dying is less than nine percent you know and, and i'm not saying go around to shoot people but if you did shoot somebody the chance of them dying especially if you're somewhat accurate and you shoot them in like the gut or you shoot them you know uh you 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 uh you you have somewhat of a capacity to shoot accurately if you call the hospital if you call the ambulance immediately after you shoot the person the chances of them dying are very low very low you know, you got to remember that too. You know, and granted, but if, if you're in a situation where you feel like you need to shoot someone repeatedly, like someone is legitimately about to like, uh, like you feel like some, like you are legitimately in grave danger, right? Like you are genuinely grave danger and you genuinely feel like you need to shoot somebody repeatedly, then do it, right? Don't, don't you know, don't even worry about the 9% or the 8%, right? But it, with a gun like this, if somebody gets shot with a gun like this, the chance of them dying is very, very low. And I know that it's kind of a harsh lesson, right? It's like, oh, well, but I mean, maybe these people, sometimes they need to think about what they're doing before they do it, right? Like, don't come up to me and threaten to me that you're going to stab me and then get upset when I shoot you, right? Like, if, if you're smoking crack for 10 days straight and on the 10th day you've lost your mind and you're following me around telling me you're going to stab me, don't get upset because I shoot you. And don't 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 start taking the side of the crackhead. Oh my god, why did you shoot him, right? Because he was smoking crack for 10 days straight and now he's following me around telling me he's going to stab me. That's why I shot him, right? And the chances of them dying are very low. Very low. If you know, the chances of somebody dying if you shoot him with a 9mm pistol or a 380 or anything like that is like less than 9% according to the FBI. And so that is what I mean by this is a very good item. And, but if you need to, like, let's say, like, someone's taking a baby hostage, right? If someone's taking a baby hostage or something like you are in a, in a, in a horrible situation. 
and this guy, let's say someone smoked a whole bunch of meth, right? Someone smoked a whole bunch of meth, and now they've got a baby hostage. At that point, you should probably not shoot them with a pistol. You should probably shoot them with a long gun, an AR-15. Because if you shoot them with an AR-15, it will legitimately, you know, the chance of them dying skyrockets, skyrockets. Like in a vertical line. I mean, you will obliterate that person if you shoot them with an AR-15. And so, you know, but me, you know, a, a 9 millimeter pistol to me, you know, because then you also got to understand if you get in a fist fight with somebody and if you punch somebody, there's also a chance that they're going to die, right? If you punch somebody, there's a chance that they're going to die. People die from getting punched all the time, right? All the time. And so if you shoot somebody with a 9 millimeter pistol, it's kind of a harsh lesson, right? You know, but maybe, you know, but, you know, it's like I... Me, like, in all honesty, like, you know, I remember, like, one time a crackhead was following me around telling me he was going to stab me. I was not worried about his safety. I was worried about what bone am I going to break in his body. That was what I was worried about. Like, legitimately, I'm not saying that to, like, sound like some uh, some crazy person. But legitimately, right, because if a crackhead is falling, if, you, if you've seen a crackhead smoking crack for 10 days straight, if you legitimately, you know, you you went to work and you watched this man smoke crack for 10 days straight. And on the 10 day, he smoked so much crack and, and he, that he's just lost his mind. And he's following you around telling you he's going to stab you. You will understand what I'm talking about. You will understand what I felt, what, what I what I felt, right? Because it's like me, it's like I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to go to work. And I'm just trying to go to the taco shop around the corner, you know, and, and you know, and and I don't know what's going on, right? And this guy, I've, see, I've, 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 I've visually confirmed that he's been smoking crack for 10 days straight. I'm not going to feel sorry for this guy. You know, maybe, if, you know, maybe, you know, like if I shot him in the hip and I broke his hip and I broke his pelvis and he went to the hospital for, for a month. And while he was in the hospital for a month, he couldn't smoke any more crack. Maybe that was the best thing for him, right? Maybe that was the best, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to take the L. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, you know, uh, this is God uh, testing me and God is wanting to, to let this uh, crackhead stab me. Right? Like that, that is not what I believe. Right? Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, because I'm a, uh, I'm a virtuous man. This crackhead should just be allowed to stab me. And if this crackhead stabs me, God will give me favor. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm, that's not how I think, you know, I'm not going to take the L for a crackhead. Right? And, you know, and so that's just how I see it. And the chance of somebody actually dying if you shoot them with a 9 millimeter pistol is very low. Very low. And so, you know, just call the ambulance immediately. If you have to do it, if you have to do it, if you, if you legitimately feel like you're in a horrible situation and you have to shoot somebody with a pistol, just, you know, I'm not saying just do it. But if you are legitimately like this guy is like, you know, like I don't know what's going on. Like it is, this is a horrible situation, right? Horrible, you know, this guy, you know, he, he, you know, him and three other guys jumped this, this girl's uncle and, you know, and now he's very upset with me and he's got his hands in his pocket and he's, he's sweating buckets, visibly very, very, very agitated. And he's standing a foot away from me, yelling at me, right? Yelling about, yelling at me about how he's a servant of God and that I can't tell him what to do because God tells him what to do, right? If, if, you know, stuff like that, if something like that is happening to you and you genuinely, at that point, you would be very happy that you had a gun. I almost got, I was very happy that I had a gun. And so that's why I carry this gun now. I'm going to carry this gun until, 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 you know, probably the next 15 years of my life. I'm just going to go ahead and carry this gun. Because I watched, uh, you know, a bunch of like special forces guys, uh, you know, and they're all carrying full-size guns. They're almost all carrying full-size guns. And I was like, you know, well, if they're carrying full-size guns, I can carry a compact-size gun that's uh, that's steel-framed and it's got 15 plus one, double action, single action. And I was shooting it yesterday. And when I was shooting it, I was hitting a uh, an eight-inch circular plate from 35 yards away. And, uh, you know, I was shooting it like this. Uh, like ping, ping, ping that fast. I was shooting it that fast. Like legitimately uh, one, like two seconds between shots. And I was hitting the target and I hit 23 out of 29 rounds. And so, you know, it's almost zero recoil, almost zero recoil. I think that the reason that I missed six times was because the, the, uh, the sight, the, the sights operate a, a little bit differently on this gun than, than my 365. I think that that's, that's just what happened was that the, the 365, it just has a different uh, sight picture. 
And but that's the thing, you know, you know, I, I you know, it took me two days of work to buy this pistol, right? You know what I mean, but that's what I mean by once you start making like ten, twelve thousand dollars a month of take home pay, you have unlimited money. And you know, um, but unlimited money is not just the money itself, right? It's like because me, I could run as many as many cattle as I want. You know, if you look at my grass, I can, you know, my grass is is doing is doing phenomenally well. Oh, I actually, I see a, a seed head right here. Oh no, I thought I saw a seed head, but it's not a seed head. Dang, I still haven't seen any sort any sign of flowering on this on this grass yet. But you know, you know, my grass is doing phenomenally well. My cattle are doing phenomenally well. I'm making a boatload of money. But you know, but unlimited money is not just a set amount of money, right? It's about also being somebody who has the capacity to generate this capital. You know, like me, if I wanted to, I could work 24 hours a day for 365 days a year if I felt like it. If that was genuinely what I wanted to do, I could do I could do it because I have unlimited demand for my skill set, right? Like the amount of demand that there is for my skill set is so high that even, you know, that even if I worked 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, I would still have work to do. That is how that that is how my skill set works, right? Like me, there is not enough uh me uh you know, I couldn't uh I couldn't work enough to to satiate the demand for my skill set. If I worked for 24 hours a day, 365 days a year for the rest of my life, there would still be demand for my skill set. Very, very, very high demand for my skill set, right? Because I'm a farmer. I grow food for people. I grow very, very, very high quality food for people. And so, you know, you know, people need to eat, right? And so, and this right here, grass-fed beef is like the number one, uh, the, the number one beef product in America. In terms of the American consumer, the the, the beef, uh, grass-fed beef is the number one, not the number one product. And so, you know, uh, there is legitimately unlimited demand for my skill set. I could work 24 hours a day for 365 days a year. And that is what I mean by I have unlimited money. You know, I have unlimited money because, you know, it's like me. I just work and, you know, uh, I don't have, you know, like I'm not addicted to drugs and I don't like drink all the time. And, you know, like uh, legitimately I go to work in the morning and then when I come home at night, I, I go to work and then I go to sleep. Right. I mean. I legitimately work, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't even, I don't do anything except for work, but I mean, I'm not saying that like, uh, like, oh my God, woe is me. You know, I, I've, I've come to the conclusion in my life that, you know, 99.99999% of the time, money is more important than anything else that I could possibly be doing. Like if I want to take a break, if I want to just, uh, you know, uh, you know, take a vacation, or whatever. Oh, I just want to go and do something else. It's probably not. Not you know. I will. I will be. I will be happier if I just focused on making more money, instead of you know. Oh man, I want to take a vacation. Oh man, I want to take a break. Oh man, you know. I want to you know uh, throw a pity party for myself. All that stuff. It just. It, it. You know. Ultimately, the long story short, it is better to just think about money. From 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 what I have seen, personally, that is just my belief. And I lost my walking trail. I don't know where it went. Uh, now I'm walking on the grass, but that is just from what I have seen. And so, you know, me, I don't, I don't do anything except for working. I'm not saying that like, like, a, like it's like a problem. I'm just saying that, you know, I well, you know, 99.99999 percent of the time, money is more important from what I, from what I have seen, right? Because if I'm not going to be out here making money, what am I going to be doing? You know, like doing nothing, feeling bad for feeling sorry for myself. I mean, what am I gonna be doing, right? I mean, none of that stuff is more valuable than money. I'd rather just go and make some myself some more money. And so, you know, at this point in time, you know, I, I can legitimately buy whatever I want. And uh, granted that I just do things, you know, continue to do things, and I don't have many uh, major problems. I can buy anything that I want, and you know. Uh, my cattle look very good. My grass looks very good. I'm doing very good for myself. I just got to stay after it, but that's it for me today, YouTube. You have a good one.